This is Jeff Mucci with RCR Wireless News at the 2012 CCA Competitive Carrier Association Annual Meeting with John Celentano from Tesco Technologies. John, thanks for joining us today. Uh, pleasure to be here, Jeff. It's, uh, this is a good show. So you got a couple things you want to demo today. What do you have? Yeah, we wanted to show a few products that are relevant to the, uh, to the wireless industry today. Uh, the first product uh, that uh, we'd like to highlight is um, uh, manufactured by Fluke Instruments, one of our vendors. Uh, this is called the AirCheck, and this is a Wi-Fi tester. And we saw the announcement um, just today with Boingo and CCA, and Wi-Fi is getting to be a big deal for uh, Wi-Fi offload of the cellular network, and just the ubiqu ubiquity of Wi-Fi in public places and uh, even in the home. But th what this thing does is detects a Wi-Fi signal um, and will also verify the signal strength of a Wi-Fi hotspot when it's deployed. And so it, the fact that it's handheld, it's very compact, it's very useful, it's very uh, uh, intuitive in the way it works, but it allows uh, the um, uh, network operator or their installer to check uh, the presence of uh, Wi-Fi in 802.11 A, B, G, N bands and um, signal strengths, if there's a, a, a rogue Wi-Fi hotspot nearby that's causing interference, it can find that as well. So, you know, when Wi-Fi is deployed uh, or if they're planning a Wi-Fi deployment, this thing is a, a very useful device to um, survey the area and to uh, print out, uh, to record results of, of those signals. And then that data can be stored and downloaded into some kind of uh, analysis program uh, after the fact. So. Okay, what's the product called again who makes it? It's called the Fluke Networks is the manufacturer. It's called the AirCheck. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have it available through our, through our catalog. And who's buying the product today? Uh, it's being sold to uh, installers who are involved in any kind of Wi-Fi deployments. Mm -hmm. Uh, and operators of Wi-Fi systems who may want to check their deployments after the fact. So if uh, somebody sets up a Wi-Fi hotspot somewhere and after a while it's getting a lot of usage, they want to check the signal strength, they want to see if there's other interfering uh, Wi-Fi hotspots in the area. And um, uh, so it's a very handy product both for installers and, and, the, and the operators that uh, are operating these networks. Okay, so we've got a second product here. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about this product? Well, I'll give you a little background. Uh, a few years ago, the um, FCC notified the TV broadcasters and the public that analog television was being phased out in favor of digital. And when that happened, it freed up some spectrum. Uh, and if we look at where TV broadcasts from, it's um, all the way from the VHF band down as low as 50 megahertz all the way up to, in this case, uh, 806 megahertz. Well, a block of that, a piece of that was auctioned off in what we call the 700 megahertz band mm -hmm. from 698 to 806. But then there's another block in the 470 to 698 band that opened up and that's referred to as white space. This is a uh, white space radio that operates in either the 473 uh, megahertz frequency or 643, somewhere in, there, in that band. And it's intended for low data throughput over long distances. This operates on a non-line of sight basis, it's unlicensed and it allows uh, an operator, particularly a private network that's doing some kind of uh, remote monitoring and control or some kind of SCADA functions mm -hmm. that has a low data throughput need. Uh, this is a very uh, handy uh, uh, radio to, to serve that purpose. And the way it works is you have one on each end of the hop okay, and you have a directional antenna that's pointing to the other radio. And this will go over hills, it will go through trees and obstructions and the like. So it, it's very good in, in, for, from a transmission propagation point of view. And this is the actual size of the radio. What we have to do then is add, add a power plug, uh, uh, a feed, and also a, 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 a Ethernet connection to take the data out, and an antenna on top, a directional antenna, a Yagi. Um, and this is a very cost-effective deployment. It can be used, although it's probably not that cost-effective for a, um, a wireless internet service provider, but you can push um, data connections, a meg plus minus, out some distance to uh, residences or businesses that can't normally get a, a good uh, broadband connection over some wired facility. Okay. Yeah. So what, uh, who makes the product and what's its product uh, name? The, uh, it's called the Agility White, uh, White Space Radio, AWR, and it's made by a company called KTS Wireless. And they're a new vendor. Uh, the trick with them is uh, they're the first uh, White Space Radio manufacturer to get approved by the FCC and they're also registered with Spectrum Bridge, which is the database manager. So when anybody deploying white space radio has to register with a database manager, either Spectrum Bridge or Telcordia, to, that maintains the mapping of where available white space is to just to prevent interference and to prevent 
uh, more than one party um, deploying in the same area. So uh, these are the first, uh, AW, uh, KTS Wireless is the first to get approved mm -hmm. and, um, and we're their only distributor right now. So and who's buying the product today? Well, it's intended for industrial applications primarily, uh, utilities, oil and gas, uh, um, any kind of um, industrial site. Mm -hmm. uh, campus applications are right. also a, a big area for this. And uh, so it's just really getting started, but uh, you know the, the delays have been the fact that the radio has not been available up to now. Right. So um, uh, we expect to get some pretty good interest on this from uh, from these uh, self-maintained users and um, and some public carrier networks like WISPs that have uh, unique applications. It won't fit a, a, a classical WISP model, a point to multi-point, but it will do for specialized applications, and it does very well. And it's very cost-effective. Okay. Let's take a look at it more closely in a demo. Okay. So you can see the, <clears throat> the radio itself it looks pretty compact and, and by itself it doesn't give you a sense of how it actually looks in the field. This is an actual installation uh, nearby a, um, a uh, power generation station and you can see the radio itself with the, uh, the directional antenna pointing to some point within the site. Uh, we have our power being fed in from the bottom along with our, um, our ethernet cable to take the data signal out. At the receive end we have the exact same configuration where we have the data coming into the unit, it's also powered, uh, and the directional antenna pointing back this way. So we, we sell this system as a complete kit with all the mounting hardware, the cabling, and the antenna. And so it makes for a very easy deployment. And uh, as long as you have some kind of um, mount to uh, attach to, then uh, uh, this can be readily turned up in, in service in a, in a very short period of time. So the other product we wanted to highlight today is a product from a company called NARDA up in, New Jer in um, Long Island. They make what's called the NARDA Alert S3. And this is a, um, uh, uh, a very compact uh, RF and microwave radiation detection device that every tower climber should have. It will give you both uh, visual and audible and vibrating uh, alerts. And, and the purpose of it is as, tower, as climbers uh, scale a tower and come close to active antennas, this alerts them to the fact that the uh, radiation level may be higher than is uh, safe for them to, uh, to endure. And without it, they could be in real trouble if they climbed the tower and, and not knowing where the radiation is coming from. So it's kind of akin to a Geiger counter for uh, uh, atomic radiation, but this is for RF and microwave signals. And it has a very wide band down from 100 kilohertz up to 50 gigahertz. And it's, um, it, it, it really just is a safety device that uh, really no tower climber should be without.